please remember the decomposition of actions is mainly speaking with respect to the basics of structural testing i have three levels of testing but when it comes to the system testing so it mainly focuses on i have a threat you all know what exactly threats is all about but i will have the threat with a different different views so this is the source asf source asf to sync asf so this part is what i will call it as a guys we are trying to define or we are trying to understand the end point of a thread so using a concept of graph theory based is what hello everyone i welcome all of you to the very interesting topic that's going to be the system testing so guys you'll be wondering so what exactly the system testing is all about we have heard about this yes where exactly you have heard about this guys we have discussed different levels of testing yes in that the last level that we have is a uh, system testing so guys that's what you need to remember what exactly system testing is all about and why do we need to study this chapter so guys let me discuss this in detail in this session with all of you so guys let's check what exactly i have here i will be discussing the complete chapter in this session so i want all of you to be watch this video completely so i will be discussing in detail about the different concepts that involves to explain the concept of system testing here the first one that i will be discussing with all of you is introduction what exactly that i have in the introduction so you will get to know why do i have system testing and what is the speciality of system testing when it comes to the second point so you will be understanding more concepts about the threats how exactly threats is playing a important role in the system testing is what i will be discussing with all of you so after that i will also discuss finding threats and also structural strategies and functional strategies along with that i will also discuss some of the satm test threats so with respect to this i will be discussing one of the important point that is asf testing examples so this is what i will be discussing in this session in detail with all of you so without wasting much of your time let me get into the session so guys so please observe i have three levels of testing but when it comes to the system testing so it mainly focuses on very important point that is expectations so guys what is that expectation so it is not worried about anything else but what is the customer expectation that i have so it mainly focuses on that so that is what you need to remember so i have given the requirement and the customer so guys i will be checking once the product comes i will be checking whether the product is up to my requirement or not so only that i will be checking so that is what i will be calling it as a system testing so that is the first point that you need to remember with respect to the system testing the second point is so it will not check do i have any faults or not but rather it mainly focuses on what performance so that is the most important thing that you need to remember again and also you need to remember about the system testing so guys it mainly focuses on the functional one rather than the structural one so if you want to have any information with respect to the functional one so the thing that you need to depend on system testing rather than the structure one guys so i will not be worried about the structural information when i'm testing with respect to the system testing but please remember the complete information of the functional one you will be getting if you are performing the system testing this is what you need to have it in your mind so before i start my chapter for all of you yes guys when i'm performing the system testing it's also very important that you need to remember with respect to the threats so guys i have a threats you all know what exactly threats is all about but i will have the threat with a different different views threats will be playing a different role let me make it very simple for all of you to make it understand threats will be playing a different roles so i will be seeing the threats in a different different views so i have listed out some of the different views of threats for all of you here so let me read it for all of you one by one so the first view that you can see the thread as a scenario of normal usage that is the first view that you can see and a system level test case if you want to have a system level test test case you definitely you need the thread there so which will be working for you okay the third one that i have is a stimulus response pair i will give you with respect to this stimulus response pair say for example 
I have to, uh, let's consider an ATM. I'm entering some input, okay? So that input will come to the input port and then after the receiving the input port, so guys, whatever I have in the input port, so I will take that. Then after that, I will process and I will display. So stimulus response pair. So here I have involved the thread to do this task. So again, that is what you can see. I will be talking about in the next slide also. All right, the next one that you have is behavior that results from sequence, sequence in the sense what? One by one sequence of system level inputs. Whatever the behavior that you are able to see, okay? So that behavior is sequence of what? Sequence of system level inputs. So that's what you need to remember. There also we have involved the threads. And the next one that I have is an interlinked sequence of port that is input and output events. So there also you can view the threads and sequence of transition in a state machine description of a system. So there also it involves and the next one that does an interlinked sequence of object message and method execution. So object message and method execution in the previous topic we have discussed about MM part. Do you all remember there also we use the concept of threats. All right, so fine. A sequence of machine instructions and a sequence of source instructions. And the lastly, so please remember this is going to be very, very important. That is a sequence of atomic system function. That is ASF. So in all this jobs or the task, okay, you can see the threats, okay. So in a different, different use is what we have listed and we have presented in front of you. Of course, when it comes to the different levels of testing, so threads plays a different role in each level. Now let's understand with respect to the unit level, guys, how exactly thread is playing an important role in the different levels. Let's check that. When it comes to the unit level, so guys, a unit level thread is useful, understood as an execution time path of a source instruction or alternatively as a sequence of DD path. So guys, that's what you need to remember. When it comes to the unit level, okay, what exactly we are concentrating? So we are concentrating on the execution of paths. So guys, execution time path. When it comes to the unit level, guys, please remember unit level thread. It mainly focuses on execution time path or I can also call it as a DD path. That's what you need to observe here. But when it comes to the integration level, guys, what I have when it comes to the integration level, it mainly focuses on MM path. Sir, what exactly MM path is all about? You all know that MM path will give me the feasible path for the execution of the program. So that is what you need to remember. A thread will give you the concept of MM path. So guys, when it comes to the integration level is what you need to remember. But when it comes to the system level, so guys, it mainly concentrates on the sequence of atomic system functions. These three points you need to remember with respect to the thread. So if I say thread, so what are the things that you will remember? So guys, unit level. So you need to remember this unit level. So with respect to the unit level, what is that you will remember? Execution time. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the unit level. But when it comes to the integration, you will remember MM path. That's what you need to remember. But in, when it comes to the system level, you will remember the sequence of... So guys, remember this sequence of atomic system functions, you will remember that as a ASF. So this three points you need to remember with respect to the threads. So fine, we have understood the concept, basic concepts of threads. Now let's understand three more important points with respect to this. What is that? So you all know that unit testing in the sense you will be testing the functions individually, whatever the units that I have. Individually, you will be testing that. But when it comes to the integration, so you will be testing the interaction between the units. But when it comes to the system testing, what is that you will be understanding? So I want all of you to pay a little attention here. Since we are dealing with the concept of system testing, you need to understand this. We have already discussed this. But when it comes to the system testing, you need to remember this very clearly. So please remember that system testing examines the interaction among what? So among atomic system functions, atomic system functions. That's what you need to remember guys. All right. That's what you need to remember. What exactly? I repeat the statement for all of you. Listen to me carefully. System testing examines the interaction among 
atomic system functions. This is what you need to remember with respect to the system testing. Yes, sir, we understood. Mainly, it concentrates on the expectation of the performance of smaller function. That's what we are trying to do it. Yes, we know that. Moving forward. So, guys, threat possibilities. What exactly we are uh, discussing here? So, guys, listen to me carefully with respect to the threat possibility. This point is very, very important. When I'm discussing this concept, this point is very, very important. What is that I have in this point? So, listen to me carefully. Defining the end point of a threat. So where exactly it stops? What is the capacity of the threat? So guys, defining the end point of a threat using graph theory based definition by working backward. So this is what you need to understand. Guys, we are trying to define or we are trying to understand the end point of a threat. So using a concept of graph theory based is what you need to remember. So fine. In this scenario, we have four candidate threats in our SATM example. We are considering SATM system, okay, to explain this concept and we have considered four different scenarios, okay. Listen to me carefully. Let's understand one by one. In the first view or the first candidate. So what is that I have here? Entry of a digit. What is the first one that I have? Entry of a digit. Whenever you go to the ATM, so you will enter a digit, right? So that's what the first candidate we are considering. The second candidate is you will enter the PIN code, that is PIN number, so personal identification number, that's going to be the second candidate. The third candidate here is, you will be performing some small transactions, simple transactions. So that's what you need to remember, that's the third one that I have. When it comes to the fourth one, so an ATM session contain two or more simple transactions. So that's going to be the fourth candidate. Okay, let's understand this in detail now. So guys, what happens with the first candidate? A digit entry is a good example of minimal ASF. Whenever you are entering, so that's going to be the minimal ASF. All right. So that's what you need to remember. Okay. So fine. What happens here? So whenever you enter, the input port receives. Okay. And it processes the whatever input that you have uh, done. And it will be projected on the display using the output port. That's what is happening here. So we call this as okay stimulus response pair. So you all remember the different views of threats we were discussing. So here is that an example for that also, right? So, so this is the first one. So what is the first one that I, I have? Observe here, entry of a digit. So what happens when I enter a digit? So please listen to me carefully. So digit entry is a good example of minimal ASF. So fine, what happens there? So it begins with the port input event in the sense what user will enter the numbers. So input event or input port will start receiving it. So fine. Then after that, what happens? The digit keystrokes. So that ends with the port output event. That ends with the port output event. So input event and output port event. So both are performing the task here. So that I will call it as a stimulus bar response pair. So that's what you need to remember. So fine, we understood, sir. We don't have any doubts here. Moving forward to the second candidate, what happens with the pin entry? So please remember, the second candidate, pin entry is a good example of upper limit integration. So guys, this is very important. I cannot execute the pin entry. If I want to execute the pin entry, it is not an independent task. So that's what you need to remember. It is dependent on the first one, right? That's why we call it as a limit, upper limit to the integration testing. So that's what you need to remember. And also, please remember at the same time, starting point of a system testing, this is going to be the starting point of a system testing. That's what you need to remember again. All right. So pin entry is a good example of ASF. That's what you need to remember. That's, that's the only thing that you need to remember. The thing is, so it's a starting point of a system testing along with the integration upper limit, right? That's what you need to remember. So fine. Please observe in the third candidate. Third candidate, when I'm executing third candidate, it's not a standalone. That's what you need to remember here. Let me read out for you guys. Listen to me carefully. Third candidate, when it comes to the third candidate, what happens? A simple transaction has a sense of end-to-end. -end, sense of end-to-end -end completion. When it comes to the third transaction, a sense of end-to-end -end completion. So fine, but now it's very important. You have to listen to me. A customer could never execute pin entry alone. This is very, very important. This is where you need to understand. Customer will never allowed or he will not be able to execute the pin entry 
alone. That's what you need to remember. A card entry is needed. I need to enter, insert the card. So only then I have to enter the pin number. So here I'm dependent. I'm not executing or I'm not performing the execution of one unit. So it is not a standalone is what you need to observe here. Yes, but the simple transaction is commonly executed. So what is that they're trying to execute? I have to perform my transaction. If I want to perform my transaction, so what they say is, if I want to insert the pin, so I need to insert the card. That is what they are asking, but still, but still I can execute my simple transactions. So that's what they are trying to say in this third candidate. All right, so fine. The lastly, the last possibility, please observe here. When it comes to the last possibility, it actually is sequence of threats. What is the meaning of it? It is a sequence of threats. Sequence of threat in the sense, it's a sequence of jobs that it has to execute is what you need to remember. So guys, it is not a standalone. One thread will execute that job and it'll, it'll finish its job. No, it is not like that. It's a sequence of threats. It has got to execute some series of tasks is what you need to observe in this point. Yes. So this is also a properly a part of system testing. It is also a properly a part of system testing, of course. So that's what you need to remember. At this level, we are interested in interaction among threats. When it reaches the system to this level, we are concentrating on the interaction between the threats. That's what you need to point out here. When we reach the last point, so we are concentrating on the interaction between the threats is what you need to remember because we have increased the number of tasks. If the number of tasks has increased, the number of threats has increased and we need to concentrate how exactly the interaction between the threats are happening is what you need to remember because we are mainly concentrating on the system testing. So that's what you need to remember here, guys. And also, unfortunately, most system testing efforts, you need to remember here, never reach the level of threat instructions. That's a very important point. When it comes to this level of system testing, most of the system testing never reaches the threat interaction concepts. That's a major drawback that we have. So guys, this is the concept that you need to remember with respect to threats before I move to the next concept. All right, so I have some of the basic definitions for all of you. So before I go to the next topic, let's just look at that. So what exactly the definitions that we have? The first definition that we have is source ASF. What exactly the source AF, ASF is all about? So let's understand about the source ASF. When it comes to the source ASF, so please observe the source node, whatever I have. So if I have this tree, okay, let's imagine like this. So this is what I have imagined like this, okay? So this is the main system that I have, okay? This is the main system. The root node is what I will call it as a source ASF in the graph. That's what you need to remember. Uh, I'll just read out for you. An ASF that appears as a source node in the ASF graph of a system. This is what I will call it as a source ASF. But when it comes to the sync ASF, so obviously this units, whatever I have at the last, okay, that's what I will call it as a sync ASF. Sync nodes is what they call it as a sync ASF. So fine. When it comes to the system thread, so a part of a source ASF to a sync ASF in the ASF graph. That's what you need to remember. Guys, so this is the source ASF. Source ASF to sync ASF. So this part is what I will call it as a threads. This part I will call it as a threads in the ASF graph is what you need to remember. All right, thread graph. What exactly thread graph is all about? Sure. So please remember, for some system defined in terms of system threats. So for that, so remember, so it is a directed graph in which nodes or the system nodes and the edges are represented with a sequential execution of individual threats. What is the meaning of it? So please understand, first important point, directed graph in the sense of what? So directed graph in the sense, imagine this is a graph. This is not directed graph. Why sir, Should can you tell me from which, which direction you are able to traverse? Okay, so you cannot, suppose if I have this arrow mark like this, so this is what I will call it as a directed graph. Your edges, this is what I will call it as the edges. Edges are connected to the nodes from the source node to the sync nodes with the help of directed edges. So this is what I will call it as a directed graph. So please listen to me carefully now. 
what I have thread graph is a directed graph directed graph in the sense the arrow marks whatever you have so it is directed so that is the first point that you need to remember so fine in which nodes are the system threads nodes are the system threads whatever the nodes that I have here okay so this is what I will call it as a system threads and it just represents the sequential execution of individual threads so edges in the sense what edges in the sense what this is the edges okay this is the edges nodes are what system threads edges are what so please remember edges represent the sequential execution so who should execute first what should be executed first so that's what you need to you will understand here sequential one by one sequential execution of individual threads that will be defined by the edges that's what you need to remember so you need to remember two concepts what is the first concept so guys first one is node so fine the second one that i have is edges so that's what you need to remember with respect to the graph graph in the sense these two things you will remember so first of all it's a directed graph let me write it directed graph in the sense you have arrow mark so node so what is the meaning of node here so please understand node is a system thread so what is that node is a system thread all right so fine sir we understood it is in the sense what sequential execution it represents what sequential execution so that's what you need to remember sequential execution what should be executed first what should be executed second what should be executed third that will be represented here is what you need to remember the next concept that I have here is guys I have some of the points which will describe the entire system so that I will be calling it as a basic concepts for requirement specification. So if you ask me can you define the entire system with this point sir? Yes of course with this five points I will be able to describe the entire system is what you need to remember. So now without wasting much of your time let's discuss each and every point what we have all right so what is data what is actions what is sports what is events what is threats with respect to the system is what we are trying to understand now so let's check what exactly data is all about so for a system that is described with the help of the data that's what you need to remember what exactly it means if i have a system i can describe that system with the help of the data is what you need to remember so that is the first point so fine when it comes to the second point the focus is on the information used or created by the system for example so i have the er diagram er diagram you, you have already discussed the er diagrams we have discussed in detail entity relationship diagrams suppose if i'm using the entity relationship diagram model so where do i use it so please remember i can use this models and this models are useful at the highest level so that's what you need to remember so i cannot have the complete detailed information with respect to the er diagrams so i can use it in the highest level when it comes to the detailed view or the low level um, I will not be able to satisfy all the conditions or all the details with respect to the ER diagram. That is one of the things that you need to remember with respect to the data that I'm discussing. When it comes to the third point, so please remember the data centered view. So please remember the data centered view is a starting point for many of the object oriented analysis. So that's what you need to understand here. The data center view is leading to a lot of lot of object oriented analysis. So this is one of the important things that you need to understand here. Moving forward, data refers to information that is either initialized or stored, updated and possibly destroyed. Whenever I say data, obviously I will be able to do this, right? So what is that? I can create. So guys, that is initialized, store, Guys, possibly I can also destroy the data. So this is what you need to remember with respect to the data. And one more important point that I have with all of you that is crude actions. What exactly this crude actions? Listen to me carefully. Data centric systems are often specified in terms of whenever I'm considering any system which is centered to the data, which is, which is focusing mainly on the data. So it will be specifying in terms of crude. What is the meaning of crude? So C in the sense, create so please remember c in the sense create r in the sense retrieve u in the sense update d in the sense delay so that's what you need to remember when i'm speaking with respect to the data centric systems data centric systems any system which is mainly focused on data 
So please remember, so such system specifies in terms of crude. Everything they will specify in terms of crude is what you need to remember. So fine. What is the next thing that I have with respect to the data? So please observe. Often threats are being identified directly from the data models. If I have any threats, which is really, you know, with respect to the data. So how do I observe? How do I identify? You have already seen the cardinality ratio. Please observe here. The relationship can be one to one, n to one. So this will identify the threats is what you need to remember. Moving forward to the next point. It is also possible to have read only data. It is also possible to have read only data. So in that case, what shall I do, sir? So please remember, this must be a part of system initialization process. This must be a part of system initialization process. But in this case, listen to me carefully. If not, then there must be a thread that creates the data. Suppose if you are not doing it, so we are creating the threads to initialize it. So that's what you need to remember. So fine. So moving forward to the last one, hence the read-only data is an indicator of atomic system functions. So guys, this is all about the data that you need to remember. So summarizing the concept of data now, what is the meaning of data? I can describe the entire system with respect to the data. If I have the data, I can describe the entire system. That's what you need to remember. And most of the data-centric views leads to start the object oriented analysis using the data a lot of object oriented analysis is getting started so that is one more important point that you need to remember if i say data so i should be mainly dealing with so initializing so destroying so creating so all those things i will be doing and especially when it comes to the data centric view guys when i'm discussing any system which is mainly focused on data so that is what i will call it as a data centric system so that system will be specifying in terms of what crude so crude in the sense what c in the sense create come on repeat along with me c in the sense create r in the sense retrieve u in the sense what come on guys what is that i have U in the sense update and D in the sense delete. This is what you need to know with respect to the data. So fine, moving forward to the next one that I have that is actions. Guys, when it comes to the actions, again, this is one of the important thing that I need to remember with respect to the specification of a system. All right, so fine, what exactly actions is all about? Let's discuss that in detail now. So actions have input and output. This can be either data or port events. So I have to remember these two points. Whenever I say actions, actions is mainly having input and output. So this input and output can be either port or events is what you need to remember. So fine, action can also be decomposed. The second important point with respect to the actions is, please remember, actions can also be decomposed into a lower level actions. How do I do it? How do I decompose this action into a lower level unit? With the help of data flow diagram. So this will help me to understand in detail with respect to this action, what exactly it has been doing. So that's what you need to remember with respect to this action. I have an action, I'm dividing that into lower level with the help of the typical data flow diagrams. So fine, moving forward, the input and output view of actions is a basic of functional testing. This is a two, very important point that you need to remember. So I will be speaking with respect to the functional testing as well as structural testing. You need to remember now. Input and output view of action is a basics of functional testing. But please remember the decomposition of actions is mainly speaking with respect to the basics of structural testing. When it comes to input and output, it is basics of functional testing. But when it comes to the decomposition, it is the basics of structural testing. That's what you need to remember with respect to the actions. So guys, the next one that I have is device. So every system has port devices. So it could be a source, a destination of a system level input and output device. That's what you need to remember. All the system has got the devices, right? Devices and ports. But so what are the different types that I have? So in that I have source as well as destination. So now let's understand. So one important point. So please listen to me carefully. The distinction between port and port devices are sometimes helpful for testers. 
I should have a difference between so port and port devices. This will help the tester very much. So that's what you need to remember. Moving forward, a technical port is a point. Listen to me carefully. You'll be wondering, sir, what is this port? So now let me discuss the definition for this port. Guys, remember this and listen to me carefully. A technical port is a point at which an input and output device is attached to a system. It could be a serial port or it could be a parallel port. It could be a telephone port or it could be a network port. So any port. So please remember, I'm speaking with respect to any port, but what? So please listen, a technical port is a point at which input and output devices are attached. That's what you need to remember. That is what I will call it as a port device. That's what you need to understand here. So moving forward, so no physical port devices in a system. Suppose if I don't have any physical uh, you know, port devices in the system at that time, what should I do? So please remember, so most, much of the system testing, so much of the system testing can be accomplished by moving inward, the port boundary inward, you, you are inwarding the port boundary. Suppose I don't have any ports, so at that time, what should I do? So I'm moving inward the port boundary. So guys, to the logical instance of port events. So what is the meaning of it? I don't have port in that system. So I will move inward. So guys, this will help me to have the logical instance of port events. That's what you need to remember with respect to the ports. Guys, what are the ports? All the devices will have the ports. It could be source, it could be destination. But remember, so one of the important points with respect to the port is, so a slight distinction between the port and the port devices will help the tester to identify that and distinct that very clearly. So now, then what is port? What is port devices? Can you tell us? Suppose if I have input and output device attached to the port, it could be any ports. I have the parallel port, I have the serial port, parallel port in the sense, parallelly, simultaneously you can send the data. So that is what I will call it as a parallel port. Serial port in the sense, one by one I will be sending the data. So in the same way, I can also have a network port and I can also have a telephone port. So it could be any port, but if at all I have attached the input output device, that's what I will call it as a port. This is what you need to remember. Suppose I don't have the port at all. What should I do now? So you have to come inward and you have to create the logical instance of it. That's what you need to do it. This is what you need to remember with respect to the devices. Guys, one more important point that I need to discuss. You will be wondering, sir, can you give us some example with respect to the ports? Now listen to me carefully. The port in a SATM system includes, imagine you have a SATM machine, okay? So we are discussing the example of SATM now. So the ports in the SATM system includes the digits, cancel key, the function key. Sir, what is the meaning of it? This is a SATM machine. So this includes the digits, cancel key, and then function keys, whatever you have function keys, display screen, deposit, withdrawal, so the card, receipt, slot, several less obvious devices. So all these things, I will call it as a ports. Guys, you will be able to observe that here. Okay, you have digits, you have screens, you have special keys, deposit slots, all these things, I will call it as a ports is what you need to remember with respect to the SATM machine. All right, moving forward to the next topic that I have, events. What exactly event is all about? So, listen to me carefully. When it comes to the events, events have categorized or the characteristics of data and some of the actions. Whenever I say events, both data as well as actions plays a very important role here. So fine, an event is a system level input which occurs at a port device. This is what you need to understand. Suppose if I perform some action, so you will have some result, that is what I will be calling it as a event. I repeat, if I perform some action, if I perform something, so guys, you will be getting that result. So that is what I will call it as an event. So let's understand that. So event is a system level input. Event is a system level input, which occurs at a port device is what you need to remember. So fine. Now events can be inputs to or outputs of actions. A very important point now you need to remember with respect to the events is, sir, events, can be either discrete, discrete in the sense what? So I will discuss that. Listen to me carefully. It can be discrete or it can be continuous. So what is the meaning of discrete and what is the meaning of continuous? Guys, 
you will have a regular intervals when it comes to the discrete continuous in the sense you will have continuous number so guys that's what you need to remember 1 2 5 so 6 to 10. So this is what you need to remember, right? So discrete and continuous. When it comes to discrete events have got time duration and this can be critical in real time system. That's what you need to understand with respect to the events. Basically, what is that you will understand with respect to the events? So please remember events have characteristics of both data as well as actions. Both data as well as actions. That's what you need to remember. But my dear students, you need to remember one more point with respect to this event. So please remember event is a system level input which occurs at a port device. Where exactly the event occurs? It occurs in the port device is what you need to remember. Always the events will occur in the port device. So fine. So I have two different types of values in the events. One is discrete, another one is continuous is what you need to remember here. This is what the concept that you need to remember with respect to the events. Now let's understand what exactly threads is all about. Guys, point number one with respect to the thread. So what exactly that I have point number one, unfortunately for testers. So threads are least frequently used in the fundamental constructs. That's what you need to remember. So guys, since the threads are tested, it is up to the tester to check the interaction between the three important elements that is data, events and action. So fine. After that, how do I find the thread? So I understood that I need to check the interaction, but how do I find the thread? Yes, for that, we have the control model. If you refer the control model, so guys, you will be able to find the thread, but there is a problem. Control model is a model, but it is not the reality. Then how do I find the thread? That is a big question that I have. So for this question, I have the solution for all of you. So guys, so please observe, I have the finite state machine. So with the help of the finite state machine, I will be able to identify or I will be able to find the thread is what I would like to tell you at this point of time. So fine. So moving forward. So guys, check out what is the next important thing that I have. So guys, modeling with the basic concepts. What exactly that I have here? So guys, please check out this diagram before I discuss that point. So you all know that what are the different uh, components that I have. So I have data, event, action, thread, port. So all these things I have. So please remember that. So let's go back to the previous slide. So what are the first point that I have? So they speak about the structural model. So when it comes to the structural model, so please remember structural models are used for the development. So please remember structural models are used for the developments. These express the functional decomposition, data decomposition and the interfaces among the components. So when I speak about the structural model, so please understand. So I will be getting the functional decomposition, data decomposition and also interfaces among the components. So that is the major thing that I will be having with respect to the structural model. So when I say structural model, what are the things that is involved? So data, event and actions are involved if I speak about the structural model. So what do I get from the structural model? Please remember for decompositional, functional decompositional, data decomposition and also interfaces among the components is what I will be getting from the structural model is what you need to remember. So fine. The next one that I have is context model. When it comes to the context model, so I will be having a thread and port. So guys, context model is a starting of the structural model is what you need to remember. So that's what they have given in the second point. So fine. What are the next one that I have? When it comes to the behavioral model, so I have four different things. So with respect to the behavioral model, please observe in the diagram. So guys, what is that I have in the behavioral model? So data, event, action and threat. So this is the four things that I will be having in the behavioral model. So guys, so that's what you need to remember with respect to the behavioral model. All right. So that's what they are speaking here. Now, so what is the next point that I have here? So please observe. It's very important what I'm going to discuss now. Finite state machines are good for menu driven systems. Where, do, where, where can I use the finite state machine? When I have the menu driven system, I can use the finite state machine. But so please remember, Petri nets are the models for a choice for a concurrent systems. Where can I use the Petri net? So when 
I have the concurrent systems, I can use the Petri nets. So we will use the Petri nets to analysis the threat interaction. If I want to know the threat interaction, so guys, I will be using the Petri nets. That's what you need to observe here. So whenever you want to find the threats, so you will be using the finite state machine. If you want to understand the interaction between the threats, so you will be using the Petri nets is what you need to remember at this point of time. Moving forward, so guys, what is the next thing that I have? So modeling with the basic concepts, the same thing. So please observe if I have a function, if I want to have a function, so please understand to have a function, I will be having two external entities. I should have these two external entities to have this function, but I don't know when this entity will occur and when this entity will occur. So I will not be having any idea that at what time I will be having this entity one and what time I will be having entity two. So it can occur irrespectively in a different times. But so to have this function, I need both the entities is what you need to remember at this point of time. So that is what they're trying to explain with this diagram. Moving forward, so guys, a very important uh, thing that I have, it's very simple, in fact, to find the threats. So I have a challenge that I need to find the threat. Yes or no? Yes. So to find a threat, we are taking an example. Let me discuss that example with all of you. So before I get into that example. So now let's look at some of the important points with respect to the finite state machine. Guys, when it comes to the finite state machine models of SATM, so please remember carefully, finite state machine systems are the best place to look for the system testing threats. Where do I get the system testing threats? So I will be taking the help of finite state machine is what you need to remember. So fine. So usually one deals with the hierarchy of state machine that is the card entry state of an ATM may be the decomposing to lower level deals with the details like. So please observe jam card, card that are you know, upside and checking the card against the list of cards which are service of offered. So what exactly is this sir? You will be asking. Yes, look at this diagram. This is very simple. Guys, what is that I have here? I have, uh, I'm trying to, uh, you know, enter the card. So, and I'm then the next state will be the pin entry. The next state will be like, you know, you will be selecting the transaction. So guys, before I reach this, what are the different states that I will come across is what we will be understanding. So this is the top level SATM state machine. So please understand what is that they are trying to explain here? What is that they are trying to explain here? So you will be coming across with the different situations. So when you wanted to try to enter the pin number, so you will come across with the different situations like, you know, card, you know, jammed card, and then the card that are upside down, you are not inserted the card properly, and then checking the card against the list of card, which is services offered. So a lot of issues will come. So you will be trying to understand so what exactly has happened, okay? So that's what we are trying to understand with the finite state machine. So please observe and listen to me carefully. Now I'm considering the scenario of SATM. All right, so fine. What is that we are trying to do here? This is the top level. So top level in the sense what? So you will have less information, less details with respect to this process. That's what you need to observe here. So what is that I am trying to do here? So the first state that I'm trying to do is card entry. So you are inserting the card. So fine. What happens? Legitimate card display screen 2. So if the card is good, so it will display the screen 2. So then after that, you will enter. Pin entry will be asked. So guys, so please understand. Failed pin display the screen number 4 and it will go back to the first option. Again, card entry. So you have to do it. Suppose if the pin entry is successful. So successful pin entry screen 5 will be displayed and then it will go to the next state. What is the next state that I have? So you can select the different transactions. So that is what it will, you know, prop up, up in the third option. That's what you need to remember here. So this is what you are able to see now. So, but please observe the same diagram in the next one. So what I'm trying to show you here, you have more detailed information with respect to the second option. So this is what we call it as a decomposition. So you will be having multiple threats involved here. As and when you go for the detailed one, so you will be getting multiple threats. That's what you need to observe here. So guys, the card entry, suppose if you're not doing it, again, it will go back. So what happens, it will come to the first one. So what happens here, 
So card entry will happen. So please observe wrong card, display screen one and eject the card. So that is what will happen. Suppose if it is correct, then it will go to the next step. What is the next step? In the 2.1, in the second option, first try. So suppose incorrect pin or you cancelled it. So you will go to the second try before it. Before that, it will display the screen number three and then it will go to the second try. Then again, incorrect pin or cancelled. So it will display the screen number three and then it will go to the second option. That is again, you have one more try. That is third try. So then after that, so suppose in case the correct pin is there. So please observe, it will come to the third stage. That is, you know, transaction choice. Suppose even in the third pin entry also it is wrong. So it will go back to the first option. That's what you need to remember. So this is a detailed view with respect to the second option. Guys, still in detail information, you will get it in this diagram. So here, the threats, whatever you are able to see are more when compared to the previous one. You will be able to see the threat interaction all right, so you'll be able to see the threat interaction and multiple threats that is involved in the system in detail with respect to the FA finite state machine. That's what you need to remember. Guys, what is that I have here? Please observe. So first you have card entry. Again, if it is wrong, so guys, it will go back to the first option. Suppose if it is right, legitimate card, so it will go to the second option. So here, first try, second try, third try. So all these things we have discussed already. Then after that, please observe in the third option. So guys, what is that you have? So you have the balance inquiry, you have deposit, you have withdrawal. Even in the withdrawal, we have you know, mentioned it very clearly, that is low cash, so normal and low balance. Then after that, it will give you the print receipt. So guys, by understanding, by just looking at this diagram, you need to understand how many different threads, multiple threads are involved and the threat interaction that you will be able to understand. Sir, then how do I find the threads, sir? So what is the solution for that? Yes, we understood how exactly threads are involved in the system as and when we go to the lower level. So we will be able to understand how exactly threads are being involved. Then how do we find the threat? So please listen to me carefully. This point is very, very important to find the threat. Hierarchy of a finite state machine multiplies the number of threads. So what is the meaning of it? So guys, hierarchy of the finite state machine multiplies the threads. As and when I go in detail in depth, so the number of threads will increase is what they are trying to explain in this first point. So moving forward, then generating the test case for these threads is mechanical. How do I generate? So generating a test case for these threads is mechanical. So please understand this point is very, very important. Just follow the path of transition and note the input and output as occurs along with the path as occurs along with the path. So this path will help me to find the thread. So this is what you need to remember. This point is very, very important to find a thread. So just follow the path of transition from one to another. Just follow the path of transition and note the input and output as they occur along with the path. So this will help me to find the thread is what you need to remember. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.